WebTech 2025 had about 1,000 exhibiting companies, so could I vet them all? Of course not. But still, I did my subjective and selected picks. This company is one of them. And if you don't have time for the full WebTech episode, I'm still placing you the link in the description, I thought I'd cut you out this short portrait. It's a very similar technology to gross, what Gross One is doing in that we're growing an algae biofilm in order to remove nutrients from wastewater. The primary difference is that our biofilm doesn't move, so it's a stationary system that grows on these lovely cones suspended on cables. A stationary biofilm, mechanically simpler system that allows us to, to basically bring the cost down by a substantial margin. So we think we're the most cost-effective nutrient removal solution out there for small and medium-sized wastewater treatment plants. Take me through it. How do this cone actually interact with the water? We deploy the, the cones basically suspended on cables. We call it the algae forest because it's a, a collection of cone-shaped trees, if you will, that pr just provide a large surface area for the algae to grow on exposed to sunlight. So algae are photo photosynthetic. They grow based on energy from the sun and they capture the nutrients out of the wastewater. So we bring the water in contact with the biofilm by irrigating. So using standard agricultural irrigation equipment to sprinkle the water onto the field of cones. That comes in contact with the biofilm and sponges the ammonia, nitrate, phosphate out of the wastewater in order to produce discharge quality water. You can apply the technology in a variety of different applications, either treating like a primary effluent for massive loading of, of nutrient removal in a tertiary effluent for polishing the last little bits of nutrients down to low discharge standards, or in a side stream application, taking again, higher loadings of high concentrations of nutrients and, and removing those before they get returned to the headworks. So basically three different applications for removing nutrient loads from wastewater. And could the cones basically be anything or they had to be like that specific shape, material? The shape is part of the proprietary process. It's optimized to get the, the optimum amount of surface area per unit footprint in order to allow the algae to convert sunlight into biomass most efficiently. If you lay a biofilm out on a flat surface, it basically gets a sunburn. It can't process all the photons efficiently, it gets photo in inhibited. The ratio of surface area we have in these has been custom designed in order to basically get the algae to the optimum spot where they convert the most energy into biomass, remove the most nutrients per unit footprint, and make the, the system as compact as possible. One of the strikes against algae-based systems, historically, the algae ponds in particular, is that it takes too much land. By concentrating the, the surface area vertically, we're able to shrink that footprint down by a factor of about five compared to what, what an algae pond would need. By keeping it as mechanically simple as possible, we think we can bring the cost down by a factor of about five compared to some of the, the more complex photobioreactors that have been developed over the past decade, more for the biofuels industry. So we think the wastewater industry needs something both compact but simple and cost effective, especially because smaller municipalities don't have a lot of operations staff. It can't use a lot of operating hours per day for someone to, to babysit. So it has to be a simple cost effective system. And that, that's really where we think we gain our efficiency. To what technology do you compare yourself to? Like what do you compete with? There are a few other algae based competitors out there, but the sum of us all together are a minor fraction of algae based is a niche. Yeah. Yeah. It's a growth environment. It's a growth environment. <laughs> <laughs> the bulk of the, the nitrogen today is removed bacterially uh, with nitrification, denitrification, MBBRs, nitrogen removal enhancements you can add to a, a lagoon, biodomes, uh, biocords, saggers, all, all these different types of systems that have been invented to sort of augment the nutrient removal capabilities of systems that have been built maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago when nutrient regulations weren't really present, but to upgrade those systems to meet modern nutrient regulations. So we think we're just a better, lower energy solution to achieve that same outcome. So that means you're a brownfield solution? I think initially that that's probably the, the bulk of the market. You can always put it in as a greenfield, but I think the reality is the bulk of the market today is the brownfield market. It's upgrades, it's augmenting the capacity of a system to, to match population growth, industrial growth, or a regulatory change. I'm not going to ask you to tell me about your pilot because I'd rather see your pilot. I'm too close to it to ask you about it. But your full scale is far enough that I can ask you about it. Tell me about your full scale. What's the story? Our first commercial demonstration, we're building it in conjunction with uh, Ontario Clean Water Agency and the town of Kingsville in southern Ontario. It's uh, going to be treating about 100,000 liters per day of uh, primary effluent wastewater, targeting removing about 80% of the ammonia. It's, in our case, our first commercial demonstration of the technology, and we think we can use that as a reference point to grow into the Great Lakes region more broadly and ultimately more of the whole Mississippi watershed. The Ontario Clean Water Agency was actually the key to, to bringing us in. The particular municipality is home to the hotbed of the greenhouse vegetable industry in, in Canada, so the growth in the area has been way ahead of plan 
as a result of the growth of the greenhouse industry, both because of the population of workers that they're bringing in to work in the greenhouses, but also the blowdown from the irrigation water from the, the greenhouses themselves. So the nutrient loads in the local area have been exploding to the extent that the treatment plants in the area have reached their treatment capacity much ahead of schedule. What's your business model? Are you selling cones? Are you offering a treatment as a service? Are you Initially, at least, uh, we need to sort of offer a full package system. So yes, we're selling the cones and, and the suspension systems to hang them. We can provide the uh, the process skid in a, in a container so the pumps controls electrical as a capital sale. There will be some maintenance sale of, of the cones, but we expect them to last about five years to 10 years. So that, that'll be a relatively minor part of the business. So primarily a, a capital sale business model. And do you seed them or how does that work? They actually seed themselves. It turns out there are algae pretty much everywhere, including in, in most wastewater. We're not trying to select for That's particular... not a good business model. <laughs> we think there are some applications where there will be particular culture, like in more specialty products uh, areas. So we think eventually, as we build this, we think we're developing a more cost-effective platform for producing algae in general. So there may be applications in the nutraceutical business, for, for example, where we can sell this to algae producers. You can see that with, with specific strains of algae for particular bioproducts. But in the municipal wastewater business, trying to farm specific designer bacteria or algae is a pretty challenging proposition because there are just a lot of native species in, in the wastewater that will generally outcompete whatever you try and maintain. And in terms of operation, is it like self operating or do you need to reap the algae? You do need to harvest the algae about once a week, but that's an automated process. So in our case, there's a traveling bridge that comes across and sprays the, the, uh, the biofilm off for collection. So the algae is not moving? But the harvest mechanism is, yeah, the algae growth is continuous, whereas the harvesting happens approximately for an hour every week. By moving the, the part that doesn't happen as often, we're minimizing the mechanical complexity of the system. And when you harvest it, what do you do of it? Uh, it falls to the, the floor under the, the cones, flows into our irrigation collection trough. Because it comes off as a biofilm, it's like lumps and clumps. It settles within about five minutes to about a 2% solid slurry. So we're able to send that directly to, to the, the typical biosolids handling equipment, the thickening, dewatering, and, and storage equipment that the wastewater treatment plant already has. The commercial plant is in construction currently, so we have a, we have a 3D model of it. But <laughs> 2026 will be our, our initial operation for the, the commercial model and then getting into our commercial sales following that. So what do you need to demonstrate on the demonstrator commercial? plant in Ontario so that then you can roll it out further. The demonstration plant's a 50 times scale up relative to what we're doing in Vancouver. So it, okay. it's the first installation to use all the full commercial scale irrigation equipment, harvest equipment. It's really our, our proof of concept that all the commercial grade equipment works. From there, it's just really a cookie cutter modular system that we can expand in, in capacity. The individual cones themselves, we're already using the same cones in the pilots in Vancouver as we'll be using in Kingsville. But the irrigation mechanisms, the harvest mechanisms, and the, the controls are, are more commercial grade. Take me to the future. Where are you in five years? In North America, I, I think the lagoon based upgrade market is, is going to be a big part of it. Plants up to 5 MGD we think are good candidates. Beyond that, the, the space we need is probably going to be challenging from a real estate perspective on wastewater treatment plant sites. But small, medium-sized operations, this can be the way of the future in terms of nutrient removal for plants that weren't designed to do it in the first place. In Europe, I think there's a very interesting opportunity with the European Wastewater Framework Directive. They've downloaded nutrient limits to plants from 2,000 to 10,000 PE and are imposing an energy neut neutrality cap. So all these plants need to find a way to remove nutrients when they weren't designed for it while not increasing their energy usage. And frankly, algae is purpose-built to do that. It's a low energy nutrient removal. In the long run, this allows a shift towards a different mindset in water treatment where we can probably shift to a higher intensity primary treatment to remove BOD and solids in the in the front end and then only keep the nutrients for the secondary treatment process and, and use an algae-based system to polish the nutrients so you can get high bioenergy recovery off the front end and high nutrient recovery off the back end with the help of algae. Well, thanks a lot. Looking forward to see the neighbor one to me in Vancouver. Let me know when you're available and we're happy to host you. That's it for today. If you have a bit of time left, YouTube believes you should go watch this. And if you wonder why I picked this company, happy to discuss it in the comments and I'll see you next time.